Why is that? What is it about diabetes that speeds up the system? Yeah. So what? The so if someone was diagnosed, then really they're only using medication, maybe in end stage. Or if hi everybody, welcome back to the Kidney Coach YouTube channel. I'm joined again today by an amazing Emily Carhill. Emily is a cardiovascular nurse. She has a special interest in oncology. She's a naturopath, and she's also a uh, very valid member of the Kidney Coach team. First off, Emily, do you want to walk us through what polycystic kidney disease is? How would someone know that they've got that? The symptoms, the etiology of the disease, and just anything else you think we need to know about what polycystic kidney disease is? Sure. So polycystic, polycystic kidney disease is <laughs> a genetic disease that causes um, cysts to grow on the kidneys. So cysts um, over time can increase in number and increase in size. And if that happens, then basically it's like they're taking up uh, parts of the kidney. So they're, they're taking up normal kidney tissue, which means that eventually the kidneys can't work as well because they've got these cysts in place of their normal tissue. Um, uh, generally, the kidneys will also increase in size with the cysts. So kidneys can end up weighing, you know, quite a lot more than, than what they normally would because of this, which can then come with some pain and things like that. Generally, there's two different types of polycystic kidney disease. One is that uh, mostly children are diagnosed with, um, or it could even be picked up prior to um, prior to birth. Uh, but the more common one is autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, which generally doesn't get picked up till someone's sort of in their 30s or 40s. Mm -hmm. um, Symptom wise can be pain. So pain, particularly in the back or um, your sides, just sort of where your kidneys are. High blood pressure is a really, really common one. Um, so particularly when younger people have developed high blood pressure, that's usually a bit of a red flag uh, that, that kidneys are something that should be looked at. And then, you know, other, I guess, symptoms of kidney disease. So blood in urine, um, uh, having frothy urine, so protein, um, and also having a bigger tummy as well. And that's part of how big the kidneys can get. So what traditionally would a um, nephrologist and Western medicine, how do they treat and what do they do for polycystic kidney disease? Yeah, so generally speaking, it's more about um, managing the, the risks of kidney disease progression. So blood pressure is a big one. And obviously people with polycystic kidney disease are at higher risk for having high blood pressure. Um, so that's something that would be managed. People with diabetes actually can have faster progression of polycystic kidney disease. So managing blood sugars in particularly diabetics is important. Why is that? What is it about diabetes that speeds up the system? Yeah. So what they've sort of, I guess, more recently worked out is that um, the cysts on the kidneys will prefer it. They use up a lot of glucose and they like glucose. So the more glucose that's available, the more they actually grow and the larger they get. So when people are diabetic, particularly if their blood sugar levels aren't controlled very well, they have more glucose in the body. Um, so there's more fuel, I guess, for the cyst to grow. Uh, and then there's been, you know, there's sort of some trials in terms of medications to help manage polycystic kidney disease. But generally what they've found with those is that the side effect profile is quite large. Um, and because, you know, polycystic kidney disease is a genetic disorder, it's something that people need to manage over their whole life that having people on these medications long-term um, can basically cause more, more trouble. So it's not really widely used. So if someone was diagnosed, then really they're only using medication maybe in end stage, or if they've got uh, maybe a fast progressive disease or something like that, would that be fair? Yeah, um, yeah, even if then, uh, it's more about trying to just slow the progression from you know the Western point of view with the view that that dialysis or transplant are going to be necessary. So polycystic kidney disease will definitely lead to end stage renal failure and potentially the need for transplant and um, dialysis, as you mentioned. Do we know what's the sort of progression like? So say someone's diagnosed with 30, what is it really variable or is there sort of a decline like within 10 years you'll end up with? Yeah. Tends to be really variable. And I think part of that is 
that diagnosis can sometimes take a while so it may not be picked up as being polycystic kidney disease until um, you know the disease has progressed a bit so I guess part of it is how severe is the disease at diagnosis um, but yeah it does tend to be quite variable as to how long it takes remember to hit subscribe so you'll get notified whenever there's some new content on the youtube channel and if you haven't already head across to kidneycoach.com there's an article there that uh, emily's written on polycystic kidney disease so take care everybody and again thanks for listening and we'll see you next time thanks again emily appreciate thanks. it bye no worries. bye